Welcome to Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 11. Why doesn't anybody get Donald Trump and his appeal to Americans? Controversial, I'm sure, but listen to this little bitty ad and then we'll talk about that afterwards, okay? Thank you. It is by the by the watch. It is uh, June 23rd at 9.02 and 30 seconds. This morning I was listening to Morning Edition on NPR and there was a segment about how evangelicals have corrupted themselves uh, in a blind lust for a John Wayne type. And that is sort of uh, understandable. However, the woman who wrote the book also made um, the secondary part of the, her subtitle. Her, her title is something like Evangelicals and John Wayne. And the subtitle is how evangelicals have completely turned to crap and destroyed themselves uh, because they suck. And I do not agree with that. I think it's really easy to understand why people vote for Donald Trump and why Donald Trump will probably win a second uh, term in the administration. It's pretty easy for me to understand, and let me try to explain it to you. The first thing is just the enemy of my enemy is my friend, or the enemy of my enemy is my hero. Um, Everything that, let's just call it Americans, because I think that um, when people say evangelical, they talk about um, everybody outside who have traditional conservative views on morality in the world. So they call them evangelicals, but I think it's much broader than that. And I don't know if people realize that when they're talking on, they're strategizing their frustration on CNN and uh, NPR and PBS and uh, Democracy Now!, they don't realize that people outside their bubble can hear them and everything that they say that is insulting to um, most Americans uh, and I don't mean that euphemistically I say that 70% of America is still ignorant white folk um, they, that stuff gets that stuff gets weaponized and shared with the people uh, who maybe not who may not be listening to NPR on a daily basis like I do or may not be listening to um, to CNN but they get they get that content weaponized and what it sounds like is this Democrats are communists Democrats are hedonists Democrats are calling us ignorant Democrats are atheists and don't believe in my God ergo hate my God, ergo make jokes about my God being daddy in the sky, sky daddy, say things like um, we, quote unquote, uh, grab uh, or hold to our or or clutch our guns and Bibles. Uh, they call us, quote unquote, deplorables and ignoramuses. And as my best friend says the stupids uh whenever he says the stupids i can't stand it i if if i i send him text saying i read your treatise until you said the stupids and at that point i could not go any further so even though trump might not be fit for office he has never publicly stated anything to insult faith, anything to insult belief, anything to insult the Bible, or even the Talmud, or even the, you know, even the, um, even the, uh, uh, any other traditional faith-based 
belief system. I know that my my conservative Catholic friends all are going to vote for Trump. I know that all of my gun-owning friends are going to vote for Trump because they do not want their guns taken from them. And one issue is enough to make someone vote for a president. One issue, let me say it again, one issue is enough. And it's on both sides. Democrats, their one issue is pro-choice. Uh, or their one issue is civil rights, or their one issue is um, uh, social or um, um, f- free uh, K-12 education, public schools, or it might be um, it might be social services. Like there's one thing that uh, either Democrats or the progressive left want uh, whether it's you know, health care for all. That's a big one. Uh, the Obama uh, Obamacare. That's another one. Uh, all of these people would fall on their swords over these issues, and so it's the same with the conservative right. And it's not even evangelicals. Catholics don't like the way Christians are being spoken about. Um, Lutherans don't like the way Christians are being spoken about. And honestly. I hate to say it out loud, but not everybody's on the gay train and not everybody's on the immigrant train and not everybody is on um, uh, the the inclusion of undocumented immigrants as being made equal to documented immigrants, right? Um, People can easily say, if you are here illegally... America is going to arrest you and naturally going to separate you from your child because anybody who is arrested is separated from their children. So kids in cages does not resonate across all the aisles and all the differing opinions in America. Kids in cages is to many people inhumane because of the inhumane people who cross the border who should have known that their children would be taken from them. Um, I mean, it's not a secret, right? It was never a secret. And my other crazy conservative friend who retired from the military after um, getting a bronze star, he um, he did uh, anti, um, anti-insurgency warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he says that he doesn't believe that uh, all the children who are being taken across all the borders are, in fact, the children of the people who are taking them. He uh, strongly believes that a lot of these children are um, are trafficked, etc., etc., etc. So there's so many different belief systems, and the only person who allows everything to who, who who promises no innovation who promises to leave things status quo who promises to um reset a country to a place it was before that doesn't really think that much about uh, lgbtq or does not think about in many cases doesn't ever think about a trans person because has never met a trans person and doesn't like how that person's rights Um, infringe upon their rights. In fact, there's a lot of libertarians who are now going to vote for Trump because, what was it someone said recently? Uh, A libertarian is an anarchist without commitment. Um, a A lot of libertarians appear progressive until the decisions made by progressives start to impede or in any way affect them. So, libertarians believe in a live and let live theory of government and um and at the end of the day i i can't even tell you i have a friend who is a journalist and a friend who is like i said a retired soldier and all these people actually believe that islam is trying to take over the west through immigration i mean i don't believe that i love immigration i grew up in hawaii and you couldn't have been more uh, diverse using the lowercase d in diversity. 
uh, which is just naturally the emergence of people immigrating, emigrating, moving into an island in the Pacific over generations and generations. I'm not talking about these crazy floods of capital D diversity that will create uh, a great democracy voting uh, standard. And finally, not everybody who is fiscally liberal or fiscally progressive is socially liberal or socially progressive. Case in point, all of these immigrants from Central and South America and many of these immigrants from Africa and many of these immigrants from the Middle East and many of these immigrants from India do not share. They might feel that uh, a lot of the fiscal social responsibility is important, but they might not. I mean, if you go to India or Africa, I know Africa is not a country. I'll say to make it sound better, uh, South Asia, East Asia, the continent of Africa, Central America, South America, including Mexico. And there's not necessarily um, as much outside of Western Europe, as much compassion for our LGBTQ brothers and sisters and others. I don't know, not everybody genders with a brother or sister. Um, and we got to understand that when they come here, they want the support of the Democratic Party. They want the support of being welcome as immigrants. They want the support of not being uh, crapped upon or having crosses burned in their yards and being treated like fellow Americans. However, they do not want to have gay or lesbian sons and daughters. They do not necess- They do not believe in science necessarily or do not uh, necessarily believe in sky daddy versus um, uh, do not believe in atheism. They are often people of faith who bring their faithfulness here into temples and into churches and into, into, uh, um, 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 uh, I'm on a roll here, but I completely forget uh, what uh, Muslim uh, holy of places of faith they're called. Ugh. Hey, Google, where do Muslims worship? On the they say- mosques. Haha, <laughs> mosques. Thank you, Google. Um, so mosques, and I think that is super awesome, and Buddhist temples. Um, our Buddhists, uh, our Buddhists, uh, LBG, LGBTQ plus allies, um, do they really live and let live? Um, is there an opinion on that? Uh, I know that the black community isn't really necessarily, and the Latino community isn't necessarily happy with their sons and daughters being gay and lesbian. I know for a fact that that's why the DL culture is so prevalent amongst uh, working class, blue collar, white families and African-American families and Latino families because you have to go on the down low when your communities of faith and your communities and your mothers and fathers and and so forth do not approve of your lifestyle. And that's going to show up at the at the polls. Um, That's the secret time bomb. Whisper, whisper, whisper. I'm going to vote for Trump in 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 the private polling booth. quote unquote. That's not me. I'm just putting that in quotes. And that's something that's going to surprise a lot of people. A lot of people are, if you will, pastors in the day and, you know, and, 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 and sexy babies at night, you know, they're, they're leaders of the community by day and by night they're doing terrible, terrible, um, Epstein kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't want you to be surprised when in November this doesn't turn out the way uh, anybody wants it to. Anybody who listens to me, it's going to probably turn out uh, for a second term for Trump, uh, which will, like I said in a previous es- episode, be the kind of exacerbation required to make this country realize that 
It can't just go for generic Democrat that needs to find a Bernie or an AOC or someone else to fight fire with fire. Um, and all that's going to do is give the right a little bit more ammunition in, the, uh, to, in a way that proves that the left is being led by Marxists, which is still a dirty word, by Leninists, which is still a dirty word, by, by um, uh, progressives, which is still a dirty word, by commies, by, by workers' parties, by, um, uh, is it reactionaries or rad by radicals? And then that's going to spook even more people and bring the base wider and wider and wider. Because in this country, we've been, I mean, <laughs> when, when the Democrats started uh, calling the boogeyman uh, Putin and the boogeyman Russia and the boogeyman, um, and, and never China, which is actually communist, but all, all the ills of the world in support of Trump were because of Russia, we still got to know that all of that epigenetics associated with our um, our existential crisis known as Cold War and impending nuclear Armageddon is still in there. And the people who experience that, including me, and I'm only 50, I have another 25 or 30 years if I, if I stay healthy. And I'm going to be making those crazy voting decisions. And it's going to be based on that fear of commies, right, from when I was a kid. And anybody older than me is still afraid of commies deep down. So anybody who signifies as communists are going to be seen as terrorists. And I dare say, and this is the last thing I'm going to say because it's going to get me a lot of tr in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, fascists are bad, but anti-fascists are bad too. I mean, it's the same war uh, between uh, the brown shirts in Germany and... And the, the red shirts, I think, or whatever they were called uh, in Germany, who fought, uh, fought for Germany, uh, the Nazis won. But there was definitely an attempt to make Germany into, into a, uh, um, a, a Marxist-Leninist uh, communist state as well. So it's going to be a really interesting election. I can't tell you that. I can definitely tell you that. And I'll get back to something that's more... Uh, happy and fun in our next uh, in our next episode. That'll be episode next episode is twelve. I'll uh, thank you, and we'll then move on to the outro in a second. Thank you for listening to Chris Cast, season two, episode eleven. Uh, which I'm going to call Evangelicals and John Wayne, but probably not going to be the title that I'm going to put up. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. I'm at Chris Abraham everywhere. I'm chrisabraham.com. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. Like I said in my other episodes, in a godful world where everybody worships Abraham, uh, I needed to go to Godless Soviet Union to find Abraham.su because that's my last name. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Chris Abraham. You can find me No Agenda Show at Chris. You can find me at Instagram at Chris Abraham. You can find me at Facebook at Chris Abraham. You can find me at YouTube at Chris Abraham. Uh, is that it? And uh, looking forward, please subscribe. And talk to you next time. Mahalo.